This is Dr. David Kopez, and I'm going to be talking to you about our poster presentation, uh, The Gift of Burnout Initiation into Becoming a Healer. One of the things that I've been thinking about as far as a frame shift for how we think about burnout, we tend to look at it as an individual problem. Uh, the person needs time management skills, they need stress reduction skills. There's kind of a blame the victim approach with this. Uh, there are people that are starting to talk about burnout as a moral injury phenomenon, uh, that we're trained to do something professionally and our institutions are actually preventing us from doing that, and that burnout rather than a personal deficit could be a moral dilemma that we're having where we're uh, finding ourselves working in institutions that don't support healing relationships and don't support uh, a process of healing that takes time. So with thinking about this idea of burnout as an initiation, um, initiations are what happen in traditional cultures. They're how people move from one state of being or one stage of life to another. I work with a, a healer from the Southern Ute Reservation, an indigenous healer in the United States, Joseph Rael, and he talks about intentional suffering as part of ceremonies. So as part of going through an initiation process, you embrace suffering and the power and energy of that suffering breaks down your ego and then you reform a new identity as a healer for instance so perhaps the burnout phenomenon that we're seeing in the world health organization is called this an occupational phenomenon now and recognized it in icd-11 uh, perhaps this process of burnout that we're going through is not an individual failing but it's part of a ancient process of initiation and transformation into becoming a healer that's only allowed to partially play out uh, because we don't have a support of elders around us who can guide us through these processes of initiation and transformation. So there's a couple of other lines of uh, kind of converging evidence with this too. Jack Meserau talks about uh, the idea of transformational learning and in his model the first stage is disorientation. So before you can reach transformation, you have to go through a stage of disorientation. You also go through a stage where you recognize that the disorientation is actually part of the process of transformation, and then you're no longer fighting it. You're recognizing that you have to go through this process. And another line of evidence is uh, the archetype of the wounded healer. Uh, this is from the foundation of Western medicine and Greek mythology, where Asclepius learned medicine from the centaur Chiron, who had a non-healing wound from a poisoned arrow that he had. And Chiron could teach healing to others, he could heal others, and yet he couldn't heal himself. And this uh, archetypal myth it gives us a structure for understanding that there's a benefit to suffering within the physician and that we can draw upon this in our work. Another line of evidence too comes from uh, shamanic practices uh, which are traditional practices that look at the idea of soul loss as a source of illness and I started thinking you know burnout is in a sense it's soul loss this is akin to the idea of moral injury where through the trauma of working with people going through madness and illness and death and dying, um, we develop this secondary traumatic stress and vicarious traumatization and um, the way that, that in shamanic cultures that the soul leaves the body is through some type of shock or trauma. We're exposed to this all the time. so it would make sense that we would lose our soul, we would lose our sense of vitality and meaning and purpose, and we would need to periodically go in search of our soul. The training of a shaman would be finding their own soul and then finding other souls so that they could help them return to their body. And this rejuvenation and transformation process could be part of what reinvigorates us as healers. So with this I kind of lay out a few of the different lines of evidence and arguments for looking at how burnout could actually be something that could be beneficial for us and uh, Gary and I will talk a little bit later uh, about how we could develop institutional support for this. One idea is how can we have institutional elders who can um, support people as they go through this process and I imagine it would not be a one-time process you know it would be something that people would go through four or five times within their career and if we had 
the problem would then would not be the burnout. The problem would be, are there people who are attending to it and supporting the person through it as an initiation into becoming a deeper level of healer? In essence, with contemporary burnout, we have the wound, but we don't have the wounded healer.